Hello, Macy here. 0.18, one of the best things they've added, in my opinion, is docking and fuel transfer. Something I've been waiting for for a very long time. So, one of the first things I've done is to build a station and get it into orbit. Now, it's a refueling station, so the centre of the hub is just a big fuel can, and I've used none of that fuel to get it into orbit. So, I can use this as a staging platform from which to go elsewhere, but also it means that you don't have to build these huge multi-stage rockets to get into orbit anymore. Now, I've always had a bit of an issue with these um, dropping half of your ship every time you want to go anywhere because it seems so archaic to me. Now, I understand this is practical, I mean, it's the way it would be done, but in real life, if we could actually build platforms in space then and use those as staging points from which to go elsewhere or even factories even building ships in space then it would make the whole enterprise so much more cost efficient so anyway without getting sidetracked I've built a ship that I want to just dock with this and land again for now so before I take off I need to make sure the station is roughly above me which will make um, rendezvousing and docking with it ever so much easier so this is a little ship I've designed to dock with my space station. It's a space plane, but in this instance should be able to actually get into space. Now it's a single stage craft, so I don't want to drop anything of it like off it, like I was saying earlier. I just want to try and get into orbit, dock, and then come back down. There's a single stage. It's a little bit heavy as a result, but it does fly. Um, it just consists of what's the equivalent of six fuel tanks. Uh, liquid fuel tanks with two jet engines. Notice the intakes on the front. You need intakes now. You can't get away with that anymore. Um, so the atmospheric engines hopefully will just take me up through the pea soup and then I can just ignite the single liquid fuel um, aerospike engine in the middle which should be enough to get me into orbit. Now the outside tanks are cross-fed into the central tank so it's it's burning as jet fuel at the moment. There's no distinction between the two fuels so it's just a very efficient way of getting me up there and then once the aerospike kicks in it can just cross feed from those tanks although I like the fact they've retextured all these fuel tanks they look nice but they don't quite fit together properly you can see light through them I really don't like that so yeah they've added a lot in this new update a lot probably the most they've added in any single update so far. It really feels like the game's coming on now. I'm looking forward to what they're going to do with the career modes and so on. It did come as a bit of bad timing for me though because I've just been I just started my new series um, where I plan to visit every celestial body in the solar system. I shouldn't say solar system, it's not the solar system, it's the Kerbal system. I've already recorded the footage for the first three episodes and it seems like a great waste to me now because I don't see the point of putting anything up that's still 0.17 so I can't resist showing you a little bit of that footage so it's not completely gone to waste this is Moho, the old Moho, because they've completely retextured it now which I'm glad because it, it is a bit weird looking that big sphincter shaped volcano you can see I'm flying towards it does look dodgy if you ask me but the atmosphere is superheated. Um, I heard rumour that they've changed that now, I'm not sure. I'd have to go and find out. But the atmosphere is superheated down below a certain level, so with liquid engines it's almost impossible to land. Some would say it is impossible to land. The way around it is to take RCS thrusters, a little lander. But in true Macy style I carried on. I desperately wanted to make this work having got all the way. So I realised that this sphincter here, this <laughs> volcano wall is 10 kilometers high, which means it does stand proud of um, most of the thickest atmosphere. So I decided to try and get a landing right on the edge of this wall. Um, the actual effect this superheated atmosphere will have on you is overheating the literal overheat bar that comes up. It will overheat your engines almost instantly when you ignite them and blow up with obvious cataclysmic consequences. You can see here just from these short bursts that I'm struggling to manage the heat even at this altitude. 
but there you go I managed it and I was quite proud of that because it's not easy getting to Moho I mean now with all these maneuver nodes it'd be easier but yeah now the second place I landed on was Gilly because in the third episode I planned to land on Gilly and then go down and land on Eve which would have finally justified this space plane I bought out here but Gilly was difficult to land on it in its own right because it has an incredibly small sphere of influence and it's a, a really difficult orbit being a very eccentric orbit um, but I, I finally got it down uh, I had quite a lot of fun here because the gravity is so weak that when I just jumped with my little Kerbal here it scared the crap out of me because he just didn't come down it's like a bad dream so he just kept going up and up and up. Eventually I had to fire on his backpack and boost back towards the ground. I will continue this series, so look out for it, Wonders of the Kerbal System. But I think I'll have to change the flavour a bit, maybe do it with probes. So if you've got any suggestions, please say. So let's get back to our space plane. This has some time to get some altitude now. We're nearing the point at which I'm going to fire the liquid engine. Um, you have to be careful with these jet engines at high altitude because they can backfire and um, sometimes quite destructively. So there's the liquid engine ignited. Now this really does start to pick my speed up and I have to be careful because I do have to turn these atmospheric engines off quite soon from experimentation. So they've done a lot more um, with these engines, they've they've done a lot to the code. They behave quite differently, so it's worth experimenting. So now we're just on the single aero spike, which, if we were to take off, wouldn't give us really enough thrust. But here in a vacuum, and we've already picked up enough speed that I think just one engine will carry us through. Especially when it starts to burn through um, some of the fuel, it will become exponentially lighter, of course. So here I am at Periaps, the best place from which to make your final orbital burn. Um, so I'm just going to give it all I've got and see if I can make orbit. I need to hang on to a little bit of fuel to make all the orbital corrections I'm going to need um, to make rendezvous with the station. But I can always rely on RCS thrusters. And there's the orbit. Now RCS, RCS thrusters in this version of the game are somewhat overpowered. I've seen YouTube videos where people have taken single module very light spaceships and actually reached escape velocity and gone to other planets on nothing but RCS fuel and I think that's somewhat unrealistic and desperately needs to be nerfed so um, but yeah I do have RCS thrusters on this mainly because you're going to need them to make the very fine adjustments um, you'll have to make to actually dock with the station. It can be quite tricky doing that. I'd say almost impossible to do that if you didn't have RCS thrusters. So yeah, make sure you've brought them. I'm just extending my orbit on the far side um, so it touches the orbit of the station. And as you can see, my curve, my orbit, is smaller than his orbit. So I should catch up a little bit in that time but not enough as you can see. So it's all about judging how much am I going to have to raise the other side of this orbit to make my orbit that much shorter than his so I can catch him up. And um, before they've introduced nodes and all the rest of it this was the only way you could do it so it was just by unless you're very good with your mathematics and using your calculator it's just about judging what I would think would be the shortcut I'm going to need to take to just end up back at this point in my orbit but next to it next to the uh, station now I like to be within two kilometers before I start linearly boosting towards it I'm going to experiment with these maneuver nodes to try and get a more precise reading here. So I'm going to set this as a target, uh, refueling station Baxter. Now if you can see these two purple markers here, this is where 
I am going to be at the closest approach in our orbit and where the target will be at the closest point in the orbit. So I need to get these two points together and as you can see by adjusting my prograde and retrograde speeds I can get these exactly. So these two purple indicators mean that once I get round this orbit to at this point we will be at this distance apart. So you can see the original prediction I made wasn't far off and it's best I think to get it as close as you can. Don't rely entirely on the maneuver node. Get as close as you can and then use a maneuver node to just fine tune. I think that's probably the best usage for it. So I'm just going to boost round and get back to that point. So on the next time round this orbit for this prediction to be true and these adjustments we just made to come about we need to burn at a particular place and if you can see that star indicator just beyond where the rendezvous point would be this is the point in which we need to make the burn so if you look down at the bottom right here we've got our final countdown and we need to burn just enough to exhaust this bar this 2.5 meters per second is the difference in speed we need to to make so there you go just exhaust the bar if you overdo it you're gonna to have to turn around and cancel what you've done now this bits very important I need to get these two markers to meet again so the next time I come around to this orbit to the same point I'm still level with the ship otherwise even though we've got this close encounter at this point we'd be flying past it so once you've got your closest encounter you need to then make the orbit the same shape at least on the uh, orbital map roughly and from this point we can now start linearly boosting towards the target now if you look at the nav ball there I'm pushing our the direction of our travel which is actually that's indicating our retrograde travel so we're moving away from the target but can you see I'm pushing the yellow marker over the pink marker the pink marker represents our target in this case the station so I've just pushed that heading marker over the target so we are heading directly away from it so if I boost directly on it now you'll see it will change prograde now I'm heading pretty much directly towards the target now don't overdo it um, this game is all about patience don't just boost towards the target just get it so you're heading towards the target you can see that's 10 meters per second and then just coast towards it take your time otherwise you're just gonna have to kill that speed at the other end so now I'm much closer to the target I'm just gonna kill that speed and begin to line up so I'm gonna save you the excruciating boredom of me lining this up because it does take a while so this is some five minutes afterwards the final um, mating so you can see I'm just using the RCS thrusters to very finely adjust that and then the magnetism will grab you and pull you together at this point make sure you haven't got SAS um, switched on because then you won't align properly so here I am Dr. Baxter station with my delivery of various perishables which I'm sure they're very pleased to see very lonely up here you know in space I'm sure they're sharing a whiskey or two so now I need to refuel my ship because I need to have enough fuel to deorbit and then to land back at Kerbin. So to do that I right click on the tank I want to transfer fuel from and then hold alt and right click on the tank I want to transfer fuel to. And you can see it goes across. Just select in or out on the uh, tank you're transferring from. Both do the same thing. So I want to fill up the two central tanks, which are just single tanks, and then disperse those tanks to the wing tanks. So each wing tank will have exactly half a tank in each, and then none in the centre, because remember, the wing tanks are cross-feeding from the centre anyway. So now we're ready to depart. I um, right click on the docking ring and select undock and off we go again RCS thrusters to just bring you gently away from the station and then close the hatch I love these hatches 
Look at that, that's brilliant. Airlock closed. So now I need to um, transfer the fuel from these central tanks to the wing tanks, like I was saying. And you can transfer fuel from one tank to another at any any point. Um, it, the same as when I was docked. It's the same way. Just right click on one, alt and right click on the other, and then transfer between the two. So now I'm all nicely balanced um, for my return home. I want to actually try and land on the exact runway I took off from. Um, I think it would be a nice little end to the video if I can pull it off. It can be quite tricky. There's all sorts of cool things you could do with these um, docking nodes. You could bring up sections of space station and link them together one by one. And over a period of time you could build a truly gigantuan station. A floating city if you like. I mean, I don't really understand how the mechanics work or when the game would fall apart but there's nothing to say you couldn't make them absolutely huge oh and I fully intend to try so here I am deorbiting at the point where I believe will bring me near to the runway to the space station I prefer to fall short than go too far because then I can at least use my jet engines to carry me the distance so that looks about right So we're just starting to break Atmo now. Um, so I'm going to ignite these jet engines. Still have to be careful at these altitudes though, but it should be okay now. I'm a bit short of the runway, but I've got plenty of fuel to get me there. Now, I mentioned earlier that they fiddled around with the code on these um, jet engines a little bit. Well, one of the things they've done is made them hugely powerful at these altitudes when before they were pretty ineffectual. If you look at my speed rise in there, look, I've already just gone 710 meters per second. And you can get faster if you just angle your wings slightly up and sit here right on the edge of space. Um, you can skip across the atmosphere almost like a stone, across a placid lake. So, a well-built space plane with very little fuel could... Um, quite easily circumnavigate the globe. I've been trying a slightly different approach with this video. It's not usually um, how I make these YouTube videos. I, I usually rely on cinematics and music and so on. Um, so let me know if you like this sort of style of presentation. I'm not the world's greatest orator and I, I don't really enjoy videos that rabbit on about things for a while. So I've tried to be as concise as possible. But yeah, give me some feedback if you'd like more of this type of thing. So I'm coming in for my final landing here. It's looking pretty good. Got my gear down. Killing my speed a little bit. But going slightly wrong and bollocks I've lost my engines. But there you go. It's nothing but a scratch, I'm sure we can still count that as a a safe landing every landing is a good landing if you can walk away from it and I'm sure you can walk away from it so that's the end of this video and um, thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it I hope this helped with some stuff and uh, happy flying people